The Lord be with you. We welcome you to worship today. It's a beautiful day, but you know the days grow short and the nights grow cold. But as we'll see here in a few minutes, the light grows brighter. So we hope that even part of the brightness might be uh, standing and greeting and introducing yourself to those around you right now. As usual, if you're on the ends of the pews, I'd invite you to uh, take the friendship pad out and sign it and pass it down so you know who you're sitting near and by. Uh, just a few little changes today. Uh, we will be having coffee and conversation downstairs. So come downstairs to Fellowship Hall after worship, and then we'll, uh, you know, after a time of socializing, we'll move into our congregational meeting. Know that everybody is welcome, so come uh, to our congregational meeting uh, for a little bit downstairs, but first coffee. And then children will be rehearsing for next Sunday's Christmas program. So children be here, and Mrs. Howard's I will be here and meet you here, right? Yeah. Right. Which, by the way, I just said that, but that means next Sunday during worship is our chil- Chris- Christmas program by the children, so the Christmas window. So we hope you will come and support the kids next Sunday. Looking ahead at some... Uh, Music for the week, we have a, a, a harp uh, recital event this afternoon at 3. Davis Folkert's uh, Second Fridays for Christmas is this Friday at 12.05, so uh, think about those. I believe our Salvation Army's ringers are just about filled. There's probably, I think, one slot, but if you've signed up, know when you're doing it, and if you want to, I'm sure we can still find a way to slip you in uh, there. Dave Balk is the vice chair of the deacons and has a few tidbits to share. Good morning. morning. In the bulletin, you will see that our November offerings were below an average November. This is partially due to the fact that we missed a Sunday because of snow. But that brings us to December. We need to, and usually do, receive over 100,000 during the month of December. And this year is no different. Our congregation has been very generous throughout the year, supporting the general budget and also for other causes, such as the alternative Christmas fair that was held last Sunday that brought in $7,300. The food share monetary collection in 2018 was about $10,000, in addition to all the food that was donated. Our church giving to Crop Walk was also up this year. It is this generosity that gives us reason to be optimistic about the year end. We thank you for the generous support throughout the year, but we do rely on your December giving. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Do you have things you'd like included in our prayers, joys, concerns, announcements? We'll include the Slagle family this week, whose son-in-law David passed away in Marshalltown in our prayers. Anything else? Let us worship God.
Let us pray together the prayer for lighting of the Advent candle. Living God, blessed Jesus, guiding spirit, alight your flame within us this day. Grant us openness to your message. Grant us courage to be your messengers in the world, bringing peace in the midst of fear. Amen. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Our prayer for today is printed in the bulletin. Shall we read it together? God of our salvation, you straighten the winding ways of our hearts and smooth the paths made rough by sin. Keep our lives true, keep our hearts watchful and kind, and bring to completion the good you have begun in us. 
We ask this through the one whose coming is certain, whose days draws near, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in perfect community, forever and ever. Amen. Will you come and join us up here, please? Come on. The Lord be with you. What was it? Merry Christmas. You remember we're having during Advent, Tina is teaching us ASL for the word of this day, but also for Merry Christmas. So let's do Merry Christmas just to refresh our memory. Okay, Tina? One more time. They weren't doing it very well out there. Okay. And anybody remember last week? The first week of Advent was... Okay, everybody got their hope? Hope. Let's see it. Come on, people. Okay, okay. So now, today's new word is peace. Let's do it. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> You got that? 
I don't know. Hey, everybody. Still feel like I'm doing a backhand there, but anyway. Okay, so we, okay, yep. Okay, did, are, you, are you guys doing as well as I am? Okay, let's do it all one more time. Peace, okay? Peace. So let's do hope, peace, and Christmas. All right. Today is Peace Sunday, and we talk about Mary. Everybody knows who Mary was? Who's Mary? Come on. Jesus' mom, exactly. And she had some kind of scary news. She found out she was going to have a baby. And an angel came and said, don't be afraid. And she had peace. She had peace. And babies always bring us... No. Hope. Okay. That's great. Next Sunday, new word, new practice. But practice these at home, okay? Let's hold hands. Dear God, we thank you for this season as we get ready for Christmas, as we think about the stories of Mary and baby Jesus and angels and Gabriel and all of those things. We love those stories, but may they also fill us with peace and hope because we know that you love us and we know that you are coming for us. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand up and turn around and we are going to receive our blessing. Don't be afraid. Our scripture reading this morning is from Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 56. Listen now for the word of God. Six months later, in Nazareth, a city in the rural province of Galilee, the heavenly messenger Gabriel made another appearance. This time, the messenger was sent by God to meet with a virgin named Mary, who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David himself. The messenger entered her home. Greetings. You are favored, and the Lord is with you. Among all women on earth, you are blessed. 
The heavenly messenger's words baffled Mary, and she wondered what type of greeting this was. Mary, don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. Listen, you are going to become pregnant. You will have a son, and you must name him Savior or Jesus. Jesus will become the greatest among humankind. He will be known as the son of the highest God. God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the covenant family of Jacob forever. Uh, look, I'm engaged and all, but we've never, uh, you know, how can this be possible? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Most High will overshadow you. Are you getting my drift? You don't have to, you know. <laughs> That's why this holy child will be known not just as your son, but also as the Son of God. It sounds impossible, but listen. You know your relative Elizabeth has been unable to, be, to bear children and is now far too old to be a mother. Yet she has become pregnant, as God willed it. Yes, in three months she will have a son. So the impossible is possible with God. Here I am, the Lord's humble servant. As you have said, let it be done to me. And the heavenly messenger was gone. Mary immediately got up and hurried to the hill country, to the province of Judah, where her cousins Zechariah and Elizabeth lived. When Mary entered their home and greeted Elizabeth, who felt her baby leap in her womb, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. You are blessed, Mary, blessed among all women, and the child you bear is also blessed. And I am blessed also that the mother of my Lord should come to me. As soon as I heard your voice greet me, my baby leaped for joy within me. How fortunate you are, Mary, for you believed that what the Lord told you would be fulfilled. And Mary's response was to break into song. And so let us together join into that song, singing hymn number 41. <laughs> Mary, Mary, Mary. 
This story we just heard of the angel Gabriel visiting Mary, probably next to the Christmas story itself, is the most familiar and beautiful and inspiring of all of the stories we hear this time of season. Poets and painters and musicians, even preachers, have been inspired by it. We have today another angel visit. Gabriel appears to a woman, and among the first words out of his mouth are, Fear not, I'll give you partial credit. (laughs) Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And then the symmetry between Mary and her kinswoman Elizabeth, one pregnant too early and the other pregnant too late. And then never really knowing, should we play up Mary's youthful naivete of, how can this be since I am a virgin? But moments later, she sounds fierce and courageous when she sings, he has brought down the mighty from his thrones and he has lifted up the lowly. It is a powerful story. But today I want to especially focus on Mary's final word to Gabriel. Here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And I want us to take that home and I want that to be in the soundtrack of our mind for the next week. And so we're going to practice a little bit. I know you're already kind of tired after all that ASL, but here we go. So I'm going to repeat it a few times, and we're just going to break it down in phrases. Here I am, am. servant of the Lord. Lord. Let it be to me, me. according to your word. word. Now we're going to merge it and do it in two things. Here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And now we're going to try it all once. Here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Those are powerful words. Words of consent, words of trust. They are words that convey that we trust God wants good for us. That God truly has our best interest at heart. That where God is bringing us in the future will be good. It will be for us. They are words that trust that God loves us. And I think if we're honest, somehow we don't ever quite fully believe that. Somehow I feel like there lingers within almost all of us this notion that God might want something sour or unpleasant for us. That God might not have our best interests at heart. But here is the message Let it be to me according to your word. What you have in store for me, God, I believe will be good for me, and I can walk with you there. Not that long ago, perhaps you saw that Paul McCartney was doing carpool karaoke with James Corden. And he was talking about the Beatles' classic hit, Let It Be. Interestingly, he said it was a time, this is McCartney, in his own life of turmoil and strife and fear. And his mother, whose name was Mary, appeared to him in a dream and said, Let It Be. Let it be, let it be. I wondered about the, the match-up there. Is there something even peace-giving just about that phrase, let it be? 
I think, though, we hear that phrase from Mary and we sort of think, well, that settles that. I'm glad it's all sewn up and taken care of. Now Mary can walk on in the rest of her life brave and confident and without problems ahead. And no doubt, I believe, Mary remembered that encounter with Gabriel for the rest of her life and it probably did kind of mark her and give her some sort of enduring peace When we know that we are in harmony with God's ways, we have peace. And I think that's what Mary was saying. But I'm also almost as much convinced that Mary's peace wavered along the way. That peace for any person ebbs and flows as experiences come into our life. Peace is not a once and done deal. Peace from God needs to be refilled. Peace entails trusting again and again at those moments when new crises and new crossroads appear. And I wonder why it is that we are so enamored by the once and done model. In so many things, you know, in movies, a couple sees each other and instantly knows they're in love and then are happy and face no challenges for the rest of their lives. And I know very few couples like that. And with faith, too, somehow we want to have a... Damascus Road experience where we meet Jesus or the angel Gabriel and from then on life is all good and our faith never wavers and we have peace through all things. And again, I just don't know many people like that. Not that there aren't incredible meetings up with God, But it doesn't mean that everything is sewn up from there on out. Think about the life of Mary from this time forth. The Bible tells us nothing about her conversations with her parents or with Joseph after this. Say, by the way, I'm pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Did she have peace at that point? We do then get several glimpses a little bit later. Think about after the shepherds have left on Christmas morning and we are told that Mary pondered all these things in her heart. Pondered, what a word. Letting all of these experiences, everything that has happened, roll around in her soul and think, What have I signed up for? Who is this child? What might the future hold? Or eight days later, when they present Jesus in the temple and this ancient prophet comes and sings a powerful song over this child, but then ends by saying, By the way, Mary, a sword will pierce your heart. If that doesn't disturb your peace, Nothing will. Or when Jesus was 12 years old and gets lost in the caravan going home after being in Jerusalem for the, for the Passover. And finally, when they meet him, his comments to her are odd, under insolent, actually. Now, I know 12-year-old boys can disturb everyone's peace, but certainly Mary at that point had to wonder again, what is this? Where are we headed? And then all those years that the Bible tells us absolutely nothing about, but we love to guess and speculate. Jesus, as a little boy, was Mary watching him among all the little children of the village and thinking, he's so normal. He's just like everybody else. Maybe all that stuff I was told at his birth was a mistake. He doesn't seem very special. Or maybe it was the other extreme and she was saying, why can't my son be more like all the other little children of the village? But we know 
any of us that have been parents, how watching our kids and wondering what the future holds and are they like the others, it has a way of not giving us peace. Later, why have all the other young men in the village gotten married and had children and kept the family name going as would have been expected? And my son is almost 30 years old and unmarried and still living with me. Did that disturb Mary's peace? And then finally, after a lifetime almost at home, somehow at age 30, he decides to wander off, get baptized, gather a bunch of followers, and roam around the countryside preaching. That had to disturb her peace. And finally, when the Bible picks it up again, there is that story early in Jesus' ministry when Mary and Jesus' siblings go to see him. And we are sort of told perhaps to bring him home. Jesus, maybe a little home cooking, a couple weeks of R&R, and you would just sort of chill out. We're kind of worried about you. And instead, again, Jesus gives her a rather brusque response of, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Those who do the will of my father, they are my mother and brothers. Boy, that had to disturb the peace a little bit. And finally, of course, the Bible tells us that Mary was there at the cross watching her son die this horrible death. Humiliation, abandonment, pain, mocking by the crowds. Most of us can't even begin to imagine how that felt. And where was Mary's peace at that point? God's peace to us is not an inoculation that guarantees smooth sailing for the rest of our life. God's peace is not some impermeable shell that means pain and disappointment and confusion can never enter our lives. Mary's peace came more from simply saying, Here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. I am willing to walk into the future with you, Lord. I'm willing to trust that I don't know how, but somehow you have good in store for me. So Mary's life and Mary's peace are not very different from ours. She was concerned about her children. And her life took some very odd and perplexing and painful twists. And she probably overanalyzed things. And sometimes she was snubbed and hurt by her kids. And sometimes she was snubbed and hurt by what happened around her. And then that pain of losing a child. It isn't circumstances that give us peace. It isn't a smooth and charmed life that give us God's peace. It is the assurance that God is with us through it all. So this week, I've been thinking about key moments, crises, crossroads in my own life. I can't tell you that the angel Gabriel has ever appeared to me in bodily form, but I've rehearsed several moments, and I bet you right now I hope you're kind of thinking about, remember that or that or this one. A couple I want to just share with you. I remember one time when Sophie and I had received some startling, difficult news. We sort of sat there afterwards looking at each other, and I said to her, I feel like I have been given one of those giant jawbreaker candies. And if I put that in my mouth right now and try to chomp down on it, I'm going to break my teeth and my jaw and my heart. 
But I do think if I just suck it and give it some time and be patient, I can take this in and it will become manageable and we will trust that God will lead us into a future. I don't think Mary knew about jawbreakers. But I think her response was sort of the same thing. I don't know how do women have babies by the Holy Spirit. I don't know what it means that he'll be a great leader. I don't know all these things. But I trust that if I just suck on this jawbreaker over time, I don't have to spit it out. There'll be peace. I can go forward with you, Lord. Another story. So in October, it was 20 years ago that Sophie and I came to Pella to interview to be pastors of Second Reformed Church. And, you know, those kind of moments, I don't know about you, but I'm sort of taking little snapshots in my brain as they happen. And Pam Boat and Lori Ellingson picked us up at the airport. And we were driving, I think it's at 565, that southern loop around the outside of Des Moines coming to Pella. And we were crossing, you know where you cross the Des Moines River there? Not if you have some clue where I'm talking about. Okay, okay. And I think they pointed it out and we looked there to the north and you can see the Capitol Dome. And I remember just thinking, I'm in Iowa. Can I do this? Is this a place where we could make a home and we could minister and we could serve? And the way I remember it, somehow I thought, I think we could. I think we could. There was no Gabriel, but I'll tell you, every time I ride across that bridge, I remember that moment. And about the next day, Sophie and I were walking up the north sidewalk before the gathering space was built, but it would be about right where the middle of the gathering space. And I looked up there, and there was the door. And it still says this, Second Reformed Church, painted nicely there. I remember saying to Sophie, do you think we could walk in that door six days a week for the next five to seven years? And again, I think we kind of exchanged a moment of, I think we could. I think maybe we should. And I think this is a place that we can serve and minister together. Now again, if it was a really neat story, I would tell you that every time I've walked through those doors since, I have been encouraged and bold and filled and confident But you know, there have been times I've walked through there and I've been discouraged and down and angry and frustrated and all the rest of the emotions you know. But still, there was and there is peace that this is where we're supposed to be and this is the future God has in store. I don't know right now what crossroads, what crises, what decisions you're facing in your life. Some of them, I think, are huge. And others of them are just enough to keep you up at night. But I think if we can be like Mary and just trust that we are walking into a future, a good future, together with God's blessing on us, we can know peace And we can be refilled with that peace that somehow has maybe slipped away. So we're going to say our little words here again. First, we're going to practice them. And then we're going to pray them. And somewhere in there, I'm trusting the Spirit is going to imprint them on your heart. And that you'll say them to yourself or out loud this week, next year. Who knows how far. So let's just practice. Here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. 
Last time of practice. One time, a whole shot together. Here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And now we're not practicing. And so I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to just be at peace here for a minute. And I want these to be your words to God right now. Here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Let us stand and together with all God's people say together what we believe, today using questions and answers from the Heidelberg Catechism. Why is the Son of God called Jesus, meaning Savior? Because he saves us from our sin, and because salvation is not to be sought or found in any other. Why is he called Christ, meaning anointed? Because he has been ordained by God the Father and has been anointed by the Holy Spirit to be our chief prophet and teacher who reveals the hidden wisdom of God to us and shares with us God's ways of redemption. And our only high priest who sacrificed his own body to reclaim us and now continually intercedes on our behalf. And our eternal King, who leads us by his word and spirit, guarding and keeping us in the redemption he has accomplished for us. What is your only comfort in life and in death? That I am not my own, but belong body and soul, in life and in death, to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Because I belong to him, Christ, by his Holy Spirit, assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. Let us remain standing as today we remember and give thanks for God's saints in our midst. Thelma Van Ruckel Klimstra was born on August 17, 1931. She was baptized and professed her faith at the First Reformed Church in Pella. She joined Second Reformed Church on July 19, 2010, and she joined the Church Triumphant on November 9, 2018. Juanita Glendening Donadel was born on February 19, 1923 baptized and professed her faith, and then transferred to the Second Reformed Church from the Ebenezer Reformed Church of Leighton on March 10th, 1974. She joined the Church Triumphant on November 13th, 2018. We give thanks 
for the presence of God's saints among us. You may be seated. Let us lift up our hearts and minds to God in prayer. Loving God, this is our simplest prayer. Don't be afraid. And may we respond like Mary. Here I am, servant of the Lord. May it be to me according to your word. Lord, we do not know what this afternoon holds or this week holds, next year holds. But we want to be people who trust, who walk with you, who know deep in our soul, deep in our bones that you love us and you are for us. And even in the twists and the pains and the confusion of life, you do not leave us. So as we face things at home, family relationships, stress of the season, work, pay, all the daily life things, may we not be afraid. As we look at our children and our grandchildren and we wonder about where the world is going and we wonder where they are going, remind us not to be afraid. We look at our church or the church around the world in all of its different ways and the struggles it faces and the scandals it deals with and we wonder what does the future hold. Remind us not to be afraid. And we look at our world with so much hostility and incivility and anger and rancor and even worse, famines and epidemics and wars and pictures we don't even want to see of little children starving to death, still may we say, don't be afraid. But in all of these places, may we also say, here am I. How would you have us, Lord, this week also bring peace, bring hope, carry good news to those near and far at work, but also around the world. We pray for those around the world that in all sorts of different ways are bringing good news, some who put their lives on the line in order to bring hope and faith and peace to troubled places. Bless them. Let them know that they are prayed for. Protect them. And now, in a few moments of silence, we lift before you those things that we hardly dare share with others, but now we share them with you. We remember, too, those for whom this is a difficult season those who grieve and sorrow and miss a loved one, and today especially we pray for the Slagle family. Comfort them and give them your hope and your peace. And now we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now with joy and with gratitude, let us bring our offerings to the Lord.
Gracious God, we thank you for all the gifts, all the blessings that you have given us. We return this offering to you, to your church. We pray that you will bless it and that you will help us use these gifts to bring your kingdom in this world. Amen. And as we depart and go forth, the words that we're going to carry today and in this week are, Here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and rest upon you always. Go in peace. Amen.